All right, YouTube land, uh, we're back with another video. Today we're going to have a little uh, instructional video um, about one of the most common problems people have understanding is the difference between R, F, ground, and D, C, ground. Now we're talking about mobile antennas right now mobile antennas okay so that's 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 what we're going to cover so first let's uh let's talk about rf ground and a counterpoise okay so th so you got a piece of coax okay say you're direct feeding a half wave dipole a di dipole you got uh, some number 12 stranded wire here that's uh it could be solid too, but you know I've used stranded insulated in the past works really well. Cut to electrical length of a half wave, whatever frequency you're wanting to operate on, and we can get into that later how you configure the electrical wavelengths. But right now we're just talking about you got coax feeding a half wave dipole. So you've got the center conductor connected to this leg, you've got your shield connected to this leg, and these are equal length. Okay, so in this situation, this is your counterpoise. Your shield, this is your RF ground. This leg gives the hot leg that's radiating the, the frequency something for this to work off of. This gives the shield side, gives this side, the hot side, something to work off of. you got to have it. If you lose this, if you take away that shield, your SWRs are going to be, your standing wave will be, out the roof because you have no counterpoise. So this brings us to mobile antennas, okay? And we're going to do a crude drawing. So we've got a truck, okay? And um, it doesn't matter if it's this or say we've got, excuse my, I failed art class. Say we've got a pickup truck, okay? All right, so you got two different vehicles here, but it doesn't matter. Now we're going to put one more in the loop here. This is the frame. Now this is showing the chassis and the wheels. This is just showing the frame of the vehicle. Here's your battery. Your positive goes to all your electronics. The negative goes to, to the frame. Okay, that's your DC ground. And all your electronics and everything are also grounded to that ground. Okay? So, this brings us to the first myth that we're going to bust. Okay, you're mounting, uh, you got your pickup truck, and you put your mount on the corner of the bed. You've got your uh, antenna coming up here. Okay? You check your SWRs, and oh my God, you can't get them down. So the first thing you do is you run onto Facebook or some other medium and you start asking questions. The first thing out of somebody's mouth was, well, did you ground it to the frame? Okay. Never. Never ground to the frame. Sorry, I was getting a text message. Excuse my writing. I'm trying to do this in a hurry. Okay, the frame, this part of the vehicle, does nothing to provide counterpoise or RF ground. It does nothing. So if you if you lack a ground, you've got a mount here, you got your antenna, you run a front, so here's the frame under here. It don't matter if you do run a, a ground wire down to here, that antenna cannot see that frame. Because RF ground and DC ground are two different things. The frame is a DC ground. It's great. That's what you want for DC ground. You know, if you're trying to get a common DC ground, you know, you want continuity to the frame, that's fine. That'll never work for RF. RF, you want a counterpoise here, like the negative of the, of the dipole, in this case, you have to use the body of the vehicle, okay? So in this case, you're going to ground your mount that the antenna is on that your coax screw is on to. You want your coax to ground the shield to have continuity to the mount, which has continuity to the bed of the truck and the cab of the truck. 
Now the best way to do that is run a ground wire up underneath the cab to a flange and you can ground to a flange and you can actually check to see if you've got continuity. You want continuity between the cab of the pickup and the mount. You have to have a surface area for the antenna to work off of. So you have to use the body for a counterpoise. I hope this is helping people. This is very crude uh, drawings. But grounding to the frame, you're just wasting wire. And I just want to reiterate this because so many times you see it. Well, did you ground it to the frame? Yeah, it didn't help. Well, you know, it's not going to help. Grounding to the frame does absolutely nothing when it comes to RF ground. Okay? Or counterpoise. So, same thing with this deal. If you was to mount an antenna on the back of this, okay? Got your mount and it's bolted to the back here. Okay, unless this, the part that your shield of your coax is hooked up there that hooks to the mount. So you want the shield of your coax and the mount to have continuity. Never to the antenna because that, you, then you would have a short with the center conductor because your center conductor goes to the antenna. So you got your antenna mounted. So you want continuity between the shield and this surface area right here. Okay, you want zero resistance. You want perfect continuity. So, if you ground this mount to the roof and to the body, you should be able to then set your SWRs. Okay? Now, one reason why I want to cover real quick, you get people that say, well, I'm grounded, but my SWRs just won't go flat. Okay, if you have proper RF grounding, radio frequency ground, if it is grounded perfect and you've created a sufficient counterpoise for your antenna to work off of, your antenna will have a one-to-one -one SWR somewhere. It will have. It will be resonant somewhere. And what I mean by that is say you've got a brand new Predator 10K. That's what you got. Here's the coil. Predator 10K. We'll pick on Predator. Predator sends you an extra long stinger, the, the whip that goes inside the top, it's extra long, and it's extra long because you're going to have to trim that. So one way you know, if you don't have an SWR analyzer, and we're going to show you this real world, I'm going to go out in the truck, uh, part two of this video, and show you guys. But if you do not have, if you check continuity and you got continuity, but you check in your SWRs on channel 20 because you don't have an SWR analyzer, and you're just using the radio and an SWR meter, and you can't get them down, but you're lower on channel one, then you are on channel 40, well then you know that the antenna is too long, okay? If you're lower on channel one, say you're 1 1.7 on channel one and you're a 2.5 on channel 40, well then you know that you're going to have to shorten this antenna because you have to remember the longer the antenna, equals lower frequency. Okay? Longer antenna equals lo lower frequency. So when you shorten this antenna, you're going to be bringing it down, and it should be, um, you know, it'll, it'll come down evenly. Once you hit like a, a 1 on channel, a 1.1 on channel 1, but you're still like a 1.7 on channel 40, keep on moving it. I usually move to channel 20 then if I'm just using an SWR meter, and I will take just a little bit off the stinger until I get it there. Now, if you check your SWRs on channel 40 and you're a 1.5 and you check your SWRs on channel 1 and this is just starting out, say with any kind of antenna, and, and your SWRs are higher on channel 1, then you need to shorten your antenna, okay? The higher the frequency, the shorter the antenna. That's why you look at a, a, a dipole for 80 meters, you know, you're going to have you know, between about 35, 36 foot on each leg or so, just guessing. And you look at one for uh, 160 meters, you're going to have over 100 foot on each leg. Because the lower the frequency, the higher, the lower the frequency, the longer the antenna is going to get. Okay. Also, when it comes to mobile antennas, if you're working amateur bands, the lower the frequency, you know, when you get into from, say you're going at 10 meters, you may be able to get this to set fine. Say you had like a bug catcher, a multiband bug catcher. You may be able to get it good on 10 and 15 because you've got enough counterpoise on your vehicle. But once you go down to, say, 
uh, 40 or 80 meters, you may not be able to uh, get it to tune just completely flat. You may have to use a tuner in line, and they make mobile tuners for that. So remember, never ground to the frame. That's a waste of money, waste of wire, DC ground. Uh, now, if your antenna, if you didn't have any body on your vehicle and your antenna was mounted on the frame, well, then yes, you would mount to the frame. But you're not grounding anything to the frame. That is primarily your DC ground for the vehicle. You're wanting RF ground, which is going to be the chassis or body ground. Okay. Now, some big trucks, that can be hard to do because now there are a lot of them being made in fiberglass. And I help people all the time. They call me and we'll work through it. Uh, there's lots of tricks you can do. Uh, you know, we can always figure out a way if you send me pictures to get you an RF ground one way or another. So that's what this is about. So we're going to uh, pause this video and I'm going to go out and uh, we're going to go in the vehicle and I'm going to show you guys some of exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so we're back with the uh, antenna video. First, we're going to let you guys know I'm in my truck. It's my personal truck. Uh, it's a uh, four-door Chevy. Uh, Duramax. I bought this truck uh, to pull what's going to be the Trailer Queen. I wasn't going to do that. Uh, you guys are keep uh, a lot of you guys are that really follow me or emailing me constantly. What about the Key Down Suburban? Well, it kind of got put on hold because I started thinking about it. So I went and bought this truck, and I've been setting it up uh, to pull the to pull the truck next year. We're not even going to be in any Key Downs until uh, next year. Of course, the season's over for this year pretty much anyway. But uh, we're hoping uh, to make uh, Louisiana next year. But yes, it will be a trailer queen uh, because back in the day we had, you know, uh, deja vu is what I'm really talking about. Going to Louisiana and I lost a wheel bearing back in the day and having to limp things home. It, it's just no fun. So, uh, you know, or you lose a, say you lose a, a pulley on an alternator or something. I mean, there's just so much that can go wrong. Uh, I know a lot of those guys take pride in being able to drive their trucks to the brakes, which, which that's great, but uh, we're just not going to do it. I'm gonna, we're going to pull it, pull it behind this. So anyway, uh, so back to the antenna situation at hand here, what we've got going on. What I've used in this truck is an RCI 2970. At, the point, at this point in time, that's an N4. At this point in time, I'm using a Wilson 5000 mag mount, an old one that I have. I'm about to solid mount, uh, puck mount a, uh, a Predator 10K uh, here pretty quick, but I haven't done that yet. But for this video, what I've done is I've taken my perfectly tuned Wilson 5000, I pulled the uh, whip out of it, and I stuck an extra long uh, whip into the antenna uh, to try to show you guys uh, what's going on. Say you just bought an antenna from a guy, or you buy one brand new, um, just try to show you that if you have proper RF grounding, your antenna is going to be resonant somewhere. You just have to figure out where is it resonant at. If you have proper RF, RF radio frequency ground, uh, not a DC ground, your, your antenna, uh, proper counterpoise, your antenna will be resonant somewhere. So we're going to start out here 269650, which is channel 1. I've got a 50 watt slug in reverse. I'm going to put it in forward. Uh, now I can tell you all the way down this radio does not uh, into a one-to-one -one match. It does not key 50 watts, but anytime you take a uh, mismatched antenna through a uh, through a bird meter, your uh, forward power is not going to be correct. Uh, for a bird to read correct, it has to be 50 ohms. Now the reflected power will be correct, but the forward power will not. So it's going to show us with way over a 50 watt carrier, which is really not true, but we'll turn that in reverse and we'll be able to look at the reflect. Ooh, got over almost 40 watts of reflect. I just wanted to bump that. I don't want to blow up my radio. Uh, taking a risk here making this video for you guys, but uh, if it does, I'll just fix it. But anyway, so 26965. So we're going to drop down to about right there, 268. And it's still high. So we'll drop down 26.74. Not quite as high. Now we're down to about uh, uh, 50 watt slug. Now we're down to 20 watts reflect there at 26.745. So we're going in the right direction. 
So let's go to about right there and see. And there it is. That's where the antenna is resonant. Look, I have almost no king the radio. No reflect. But it's barely moving. Okay, we'll turn this around. Now see, there's the proper, now we're looking at proper reading. Uh, you know, about 18 watts carrier with it all the way down. No monkey watts now. So that's where my antenna is resonant, right there. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do, guys, as I explained a while ago, the lower the frequency, the longer the antenna. So I'm going to have to cut, if I wanted to use this whip, I'm going to have to cut off of it. Now, I probably will even start off with about an inch and then push it in and check it. And what you want to do, especially on these antennas, you don't want to bottom them all the way out. You want to pull them, push them all the way in, pull it out about an eighth of an inch, and then check your SWRs. Or if you're using a bird meter like I am, you can check your reflected power and tune it like that. But uh, I would just take it in. And then when I start getting close to where I want to be, so when I see it dropping on channel one, uh, you know, I'll move to channel 20 and I'll fine tune it. Or whatever channel you, you uh, mainly talk on, if you talk on channel 6 or 11 or channel 24, channel 21, 28, you want to tune around whatever frequency you, you talk on mobile to get it down. So I hope this was informative and I wanted to show you guys that just because a lot of guys, they'll put an antenna on a vehicle, well, I can't get the SWRs down. Well, you have to find out where it's resonant. If you have a 10 meter radio and you don't have access to an antenna lizer, you can use your... your uh, your export radio as a uh, antenna lizer. You can sweep the frequencies and find out where you're resonant. Now, if you don't go resonant anywhere, you keep going down and down and down and it doesn't change, well then you don't have proper RF grounding. And I've already described, explained to you how to get RF ground. Uh, if you do not go resonant anywhere, if it's not good anywhere, well then you do not have proper RF grounding or your coax is bad or something's just not right. So. I hope this was informative. I got to get back to the bench. Uh, just had a lot of these uh, questions. Been spending a lot of time with guys on the phone lately, uh, trying to help you guys out. Which you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to try to help anybody. Uh, but I figured this video was in order. So y'all be safe, be careful, be kind. I got to get out of here. I'm going. I'll see you.